it's enough. Y'all, it's the queen of automation, Meg and Donnelly, here to give you inspiration. Founders and business owners, gather round. I'ma show you how to build systems that are less down. Streamline your processes, no need. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Queen of Automation podcast, where we talk about why technology is only good when it works. Today we're getting geeky and techy with the owner and founder of the Wizard of Odd Marketing, the legendary Luke Matthews who I consider to be the GOAT of LinkedIn. He will appreciate that because we both have a love for Tom Brady. We won't go into that. Um, so, hey, tell everybody <laughs> where you're tuning in from. I think most of the people that are going to be watching this know where you are in the world today. But let's just jump in and say hello and tell us where you are right now. I'm in Tom Brady's backyard, hanging out, throwing up. No, um, I wish. I wish. Uh, no, I'm in Paraguay in South America. I am, yeah, I've been here almost a year now, actually, believe it or not, off and on. And originally from Canada, so from West Coast, Vancouver, Canada. Yeah, you know, I was. it was super funny. The other day I was thinking about this episode and knowing that we were going to jump on and, and chit-chat. And I was like, wow, I've been talking to Luke for over a year because we started having conversations on LinkedIn before you moved and we really? just started kind of yeah like when you look Dang. back through all of like the the dms and the conversations and then it was because you were moving right yeah. before we started working together like because there was this whole flux of well we can't do it yet because i'm in this process <laughs> of like moving my entire life it was a lot it was here. a lot <laughs> it, was just, it was funny i didn't yeah. but i didn't even realize it had been that long it's kind yeah. of amazing how it just when you meet somebody that you can just talk to and have like natural normal like networking conversations with it just like the time flies right like it's just ridiculous um so we're gonna we're gonna start with an icebreaker which i think is funny i normally start with this icebreaker but the reason it's gonna be so fun to do this with you is because we have two totally opposing views on this situation and um right now you know the whole quote-unquote work-life balance on linkedin is just this huge conversation with this huge topic where i am somebody who i don't necessarily believe in work-life balance i think it's all just life it's all life and you pick and choose how you spend your life if you want to spend your life working seven days a week 365 days a year do that if you want to work two days out of the week and take the rest of the week like do that like it's all based on what you choose in your life and like how you want to how you want to live your life and I think that it's that is a very contrarian view to like how people consider it because they there's still so many people that consider like business is over here personal is over in here and it's it's just not that way like your business world and your personal world are it's all one thing so I would love to have you jump in and give your <laughs> your thoughts on that because sometimes we're totally opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to that. Because I know you are a hustle, you are a hustle man. I am. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really into the box in any part of life either. So I think I don't like it when things get compartmentalized. And I pretty much live to work, and I always have. I find. I guess. I guess for me, it's I find purpose in work. So whatever the work is for a long time, it was actually ministry work. So I was in ministry in my early 20s. I considered that work. So that was all day for me all the time. Um, and then in construction was the same because I ran my own business. And uh, I'm someone that has never really gone and gotten professional training. I've always just taught myself and found my own way and started my own thing. So I think my context is heavily tinted because when you do that, no one's going to give you anything. You have to fight for everything. And when you have to fight for everything, no one, no one's going to give it to you. you get, and, and my competitive advantage is my hustle and my work. And so for me, it's always just been, oh, I'll outwork you. I'll work more than you. And it's just became who I am. You know, will that change in the future? Maybe I'll get bored and I'll try something different, like become a monk in Tibet. Uh, but I'll still consider that work. So to me, work and life is the same. You have been talking about the monk thing in Tibet for like eight months. I just have yeah. a feeling that eventually it's just going to be poof and you're going to be gone and you're going to show up. It. You're going to have a bald head in like one of the robes and it'll be like, that'll be like your new selfie on LinkedIn and you'll start it's doing the Easter like, egg. 
You know, that's it's the Easter awesome. egg. You're like, oh, that's why he left. He said he talked to him for two years. <laughs> That'll be so funny. Uh, you know yeah. what's going to happen eventually. And of course it will. Maybe you won't even become a monk. You'll just do it for, you know, a month just so that you can have the content to put out to the yeah. world. <laughs> Hey, that's I would hilarious. do that. People do that. Um, but no, that, that's mean, how I see work-life balance. It's more just, I guess, what do you enjoy? I enjoy building stuff and working. So yeah. to me, I'm bored when I don't work. It's simple. I've tried it. I, I'm, I had a dream to get to Bali when I was younger and sit on a beach and do nothing. And I achieved my dream and a week into it, I was bored out of my mind. Bored. Yeah, I was so <laughs> bored. And so I know like m- maybe most people just never reach their dream. So in their mind, they they have their weekend and their time off. And yeah. I think if they reach their dream of retirement, they'd realize how boring it is. And maybe they'd love work more. That, that's my biased opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's one of the things that we we do agree on is that I don't believe in weekends either, which is so weird to say, right? Because like, I have kids, right? So I have a lot of kids. I have three teenage boys. And it's like my whole goal is to just they're my priority, right? So when I was in corporate, I never, I never saw my kids. I mean, I worked like 75 hours a week and I missed every single one of my, my kids sports games. And it's just, just, it was just awful. It was horrible. And it was just never there. And so my goal is to, my goal is them first business second. Right. So it's always like, I work when I want to work. My weekends are when I want them to be. It doesn't have to be Saturday and Sunday. Like uh... this is a Saturday we were working. Right. It is, I fit my work around my life which is what I think most people are missing out on. And honestly, by doing that, business has become more successful because I'm not like focused on, oh, I have to sell something right now. I have to sell, I have to sell, I have to sell, I have to sell. I'm focused on what's better for my kids and how can I then fit the rest of making money around it, you know? Um, you said something that I guess I never knew. Um, I knew you had been, I knew you had worked in construction. I didn't realize it was your own business. So you've been like an entrepreneur pretty much your entire life. Cause as yeah. I was listening and you go through all of that, you've been, you've run your own thing almost consistently by building different versions of things, right? Yeah. Either an entrepreneur or a contractor, but it was still, even in contracting, like if you don't show up, you don't get paid, right? There's, I've never really been an employee. So, <laughs> you, you know, you, you, yeah, if you're doing glass work or drywall, you know, yeah, I'm sick today. Well, no one's paying for you to stay home. So you show up anyways. Fast forward to today. Let's talk about today because you've Let's got, today. I mean, you're just like crazy blowing up with this AI stuff, which is super cool. But let's talk about, I guess it was, yeah, like we said, about eight months to a year ago when you and I mm-hmm. started talking to tell people why, why did we start talking, Luke? What were you doing? <laughs> I know why, but I want you to say it. <laughs> I think it was Travis Lackner's fault. I think it was Travis Lackner's fault. Who's an old friend of mine from LinkedIn. Uh, shout out Travis. You should start posting again. Um, Travis, yeah. I think you were talking to Travis. And maybe I saw you comment on one of his posts. Um, mm. And then I checked out your stuff. And I was like, what? Well, you know, I, I've done automation stuff before. I had someone that I really like set up automation for me years ago. Um, and actually, they had been bugging me about um, doing what you did, making it all condensed. But at the time, I was cheap. And I was like, ah, I don't want to pay for this. So it's, it's good <laughs> enough for me. I can figure it out. Again, I'm a DIY guy. As long as it's close, I can figure out everything. and I'll waste the time to do it. Um, so I'd known for a while, like, hey, if I'm going to start selling a course or, you know, making my agency easier for me, I need automation because I don't like people. So if you don't like people, you need automation. Like, that's just how it is. If you like people and automation, great. Well, then you can build a bigger company. But if you don't, if you don't love people and you, and you need automation, you need it to work, right? So this works for everybody. So I knew, like, hey, I need to fix some of this stuff. Um, and then we just started talking and kind of realized like, Hey, um, you know, you could, you could help me with some of this stuff. And I'd never heard of go high level or some of the, some of the all in one tools that you presented me. Um, and I just thought, you know what, maybe this will make my job a little bit easier and I can do a little bit less of the stuff that I hate. And then in the long term, save me some money because I knew I was going to start going crazy with automations and zapier is what i've been using and Airtable and asana and all this stuff and i was just wasting too much time so yeah and i have to tell everybody so i am an Airtable nerd like i love Airtable. i love Still it love because it. of its 
um, because of the customization. And he still uses Airtable for some of it. Um, but the big issue was when he first came to me, when we first started talking, he had like 17 different pieces of software. And I was like, what, how are you, like, what are you doing? Like, how are you? I still He's do about five hours a day. And I was like, what? And I was just blown away. And I was like, this, this kind of mentor of mine on LinkedIn, I was like, oh, see, you never know what's happening behind the scenes. And most people, I'm so happy that you agreed to come on and talk about it because most people don't talk about it. And you're, I think, the reason that you're so awesome for me on LinkedIn is because you're not afraid to like show the good, the bad, the ugly. And like when you make a mistake, you tell people when you, and that's, that's just, yep. it's just unheard of. Like people are so afraid to like tell people when they make a mistake and own it. And I think the other thing that's really great, that's been really great about working with you and helping you is that you are more hands-on. Most of the people that I work with just want to, they just want us to, you know, put it all together for them, whatever, you know, and turn it over. So it's been like a blessing and a curse because you're <laughs> usually in there behind me and you're like, wait, I think I broke it. And so I'm like fixing and you're, and I, but it's <laughs> been super fun. And yeah. there are, there are multiple things now for everyone's knowledge, this is still a work in progress because there's a big learning curve when you go from individualized piece of software is like a, an email tool, a project management tool, a this tool, a that tool. When you have those tools and they're specialized for their own their own thing, and you go into an all-in-one tool, an all-in-one tool is fantastic. It saves you time. It certainly saves you money, but nothing is going to be a hundred percent right. So when you have like like Mailchimp is made for email, right? Like it does email really freaking well. All of the other yeah. things, it's not really going to do really well. Constant contact does email really well. All the other things, it's kind of do marginally. So it was a big, like, he's like, okay, let's just do it. Let's try it. And so it's definitely still a learning curve. And there are things about the system that we are kind of fitting into his world. And he still has other software. Like he still uses Beehive for um, his newsletter. He's still using Airtable for the actual like, content management from a writer's yep. standpoint because it's really good for writing like it's just it's just a really good tool for writing because you can set it up how you want it to set up and he saw his notion so it's not that you go to an all-in-one tool and you just forget everything else that you love it's <laughs> it's what can <laughs> we eliminate so that you're not yeah. paying seven hundred dollars a month for tools that you're not really using effectively so that was a big one. And now we've got the course. The course is going to be cool. You can talk about that. Pimp that out for a while. I can't wait. I've been watching selfishly behind the scenes because I can see. I'm getting there. Like, look, at this, look at this. Look at this. And it's just, it's, you guys are going to love that. That's awesome. Um, and all of the AI tools that are built in now too. I'm hoping that he, I don't use them as much. So I am, again, selfishly waiting for Luke to, like geek out on the, <laughs> in this go high level. I'm super. Uh, I want him to geek out on the AI tools so he can tell me how to use them because I don't use them very well. I know I probably don't use them like I should because um, yeah. I've never needed to. But now that I have the AI master, <laughs> you can teach me how to use the AI tools. I'll go waste hours figuring them out. You know that. <laughs> 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 Got to put those hours somewhere. Um, no, like I think it's. I like that you made that point because I think for me, the hardest part about it always was I don't, I like everything to be the absolute best. And so like to me, an all one tool isn't in my mind still isn't that, but what it is, it saves you time, saves you energy and it puts it all in one place and allows you to ship where you need to ship. And so I think it's everything in life sacrifice. So, you know, I was sacrificing extra time to have every single feature that I wanted Versus now, maybe there's a couple features that I've asked Go High Level to fix, and hopefully they do because they're very good at that. Um, but it's super close to being there, right? Like, and the automation example, like people don't know with Zapier, like the more crazy you go, the zaps are super expensive. Versus Go High Level, it's built in there, and even I could understand it. I got in there and I built some workflow for my AI course, which was super cool and easy to use. Um, like I said, there you can actually host courses. And go high level there's also a little community thing is it as good as circle no not yet um but it's very close and and usable for most people right so i think because all of it's in one place you can also start setting up those triggers and automations and landing pages and things where 
now I can manage it all in one place versus versus before it's all over the place. Now the actual delivery of the content, you'll even see it, you'll probably be annoyed. Some of my course material is still on Notion. So I still have a whole Notion doc that I'll include with my course um, that's hosted on Go High Level, but I've made it work now where all the automations and the payments and the upsells and all the stuff that you want is on Go High Level. But some of the information is still hosted somewhere else. So I think the cool thing about it is you can kind of make it work for who you are. I'm very customizable. I instantly went and found more tools to pay for as soon as I saved my money here. <laughs> no, I was like, what are you doing? Yeah. Stop it. I just love tools. That's that's me. But like, even with my course, and then we'll get back to it, I realized like most people are not that way. Like I actually changed my course, which is going to teach people how to write with AI yeah. um, to all paid tools. And I had a yeah. stack of three paid tools for 50 bucks a month. And I quickly realized like, wait a minute, people aren't going to want to pay this. No one, no. no one likes to pay for tools. I do, but I forget that people don't. And so I cut that and I switched it to free AI tools. So I am learning. I'm, I'm getting there. That's where you're the exception to the rule, though. That's why I was, like I said, that's why I was so excited to work with you because you and I are very similar, right? Like I build technology for a living. So I have, I mean, we're not going to talk about how many tools I have, right? It's just, <laughs> yeah. but, but I'm also very bespoke, right? So like I, for my larger for my larger like actual businesses, like local service businesses and stuff like that, we pick software and build software that works for them. Mm. And what a lot of people don't realize is that there's not what, like a cookie cutter, like piece of software that you can put in place for every single business out there. Now we chose go high, chose go high level for Luke specifically because it's customizable. Now, two years ago, if you'd come to me and asked me, I would have set you up with five different pieces of software because I never believed in an all-in-one system. And it's because, again, niche products like email products, this, those softwares are built specifically for that. So they do that thing really well. But the problem is you lose so much time by and you're adding more data points. So you hit the nail on the head. Zapier is awesome for small businesses when you start out. When you start to grow beyond 10,000 users on your email list and you have a database of 10,000 people or more, you it's really expensive and it gets really expensive really quickly. And you're and by using Zapier to kind of like staple you know like staple things together, you're adding more data points to track. Yeah. So now you have to track this data point that's connected to this, to this, to this, to this. So if you're actually somebody who is into tracking and measuring everything, which you all should be, um, especially if you're at the Luke Matthews level, like you should know where your customers are at all times and you should be up. Anyway, whatever. Um, it's really hard to start tracking when you have 17 different pieces of software and you're trying to figure out where people are True. coming and going. So at the, at the heart of it, go high levels of CRM. Right. And um, a CRM, that's exactly what it is. It's customer relationship management. Every business should have one. And they're not super expensive. Like you can start out super cheap. You can build your own custom CRM and Airtable if you want for free. Right. But it's now. But again, as things get bigger and you don't have a developer on staff, it's going to get more complicated, which is why we did. We were going to start with we were going to start with Airtable. We were going to go that route. But. When. With some of the Airtable is so customizable and so development heavy that you would need to have an ops person like on your team. Luke doesn't want to have a team. He wants to be a one man show, right? Like, and that's, that's. Got to make your choices, right? So, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, I'm excited to see what happens with the course. We're going to do this again, by the way, too. So everybody, you're going to get, this is the before, like <laughs> work in progress. We're building this out. It's going to be great. Um, and then we're going to come back in a few months after the course is launched and we, we, we're doing all of that stuff and it's going to be awesome. Building public. And by the way, anybody who works with me and Luke can attest to this. If at any point in your life, you decide to work with me, you get me for like, you pay me any amount of money and I will answer whatever question you have. I will jump in and fix all of your stuff for you. I'm just, I'm like, that's just how I roll. You're great at that. And I don't expect you to pay way more money to do it. I'm just letting everybody know that because that's just the that's just the business I'm in. And I feel like that's kind of one of the reasons that 
we're kindred spirits that way because Luke answers all of my questions. Um, not going to lie, he's been helping me out with LinkedIn stuff. And he just, he's, he just answers everything for me. He all, answers all my questions and I do the same. And it's anybody it's great, who it? wants a good networking partnership, you need to go out and find somebody like that that is willing to just be there no matter what. It's helpful. A lot of people have attitude. So we're just more like, hey, you want to get something? I need to get something done. Can you help me? Yes or no. If no, then point me to a tutorial. That's how I work too. It's, you know, it's speed. And that's what I like about, again, <laughs> why I'm more of a lone ranger at this or stuff. Loom videos. Loom videos are yeah, awesome. Loom I, is I, amazing. I love Loom. I, uh, I created him a bunch of Loom videos, which um, so he can always, any in most of the stuff, is anything that I know that he's going to have to go back and repeat, right? So we create little videos and we throw them up there. And usually I have them created before he even. <laughs> he's yeah, like, you already what? know what I'm going to ask. Yeah. <clears throat> There's yeah, so I've easy got to affiliate to manager. I need to make. I need a loom video. Of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's such an easy thing to do, though. You just go click a button. I went and looked. I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have asked for that. <laughs> or do it. Like, you know, why people don't use Loom for their SOPs? I just don't understand that. It's so easy, and you can just do it while you're working. Like if you're working on a project, hit the button, and then. True, and Loom AI gives you like subtitles and stuff within your Loom, so it's super easy to to find. You know what I started doing, which I guess I didn't realize, or I knew I could do it, but I just didn't think about it. Okay. So now, when I'm if I'm working on like in a client's project when I will just turn the loom video on and like record as I'm like building something or creating yeah. something and then I'll go back and add a voiceover later. That's smart. Yeah. You can I was do like, that. what? <laughs> it was just funny. It was like, Oh, that's cool. And I knew I could do it, but I just never even like never even thought about it. Like when I promise people I'll make them an SOP video for, you know, for something. And if I'm, it, I don't know, it works out really well. Well, we are at time, so I want to, I don't want to like make this too long and I don't want to take up too much of your Saturday. I know we don't do weekends, but I know, I know <laughs> that you work out on Saturdays. I won't, yep. I won't let anybody Deep else work know. Saturdays. <laughs> it's content day, people. Um, tell everybody about the, the course. Yeah, so I'm dropping my course uh, on May 14th to my email list first. Funny enough, the go, well, not even the email list, it's the, the waiting list that is on go high level go high because go high level let me segment my list which is pretty awesome anyways um so dropping on may 14th and it's going to teach you how to write with ai and the basics of linkedin so I, I did create this course so that anybody could use it of any skill level so obviously people that are more skilled with linkedin will just skip the linkedin chapters and get right into how to write with ai uh, i've featured two tools that will be free so you won't need any paid tools uh, for the first 90 days to use my course, which is great. And I'm going to walk through fully how to save a bunch of time using AI. So that'll be for individuals and teams. You learn how to make carousels and images and everything that you need to win on LinkedIn. Uh, it's going to be written for idiots. So don't worry if you don't understand AI at all. It's, it's written so like my mom can understand it. And my mom doesn't log into the internet or social media and doesn't know AI. So I wrote it like so anyone can use it. So dropping on the 14th, uh, follow me. And I'll be yelling about it everywhere if you're curious to know more. He's already yelling about it everywhere in case you haven't. And if you don't follow him, go follow him on LinkedIn. He's, it's, it's You're going to learn something if you follow his content and you're going to laugh. I mean, he's just funny. He's just a funny guy and Thank he you. totally breaks the mold of LinkedIn, which is, which is why... I was so comfortable having a like conversation with him because it's just, it's just not the same. It's not like a rigid, like LinkedIn relationship, which I feel like so many people are afraid of LinkedIn because they have to, they feel like they need to fit into this little box. Well, I'm telling you right now, true. neither Luke or I fit into that box because we're sarcastic. We talk about things we shouldn't be talking about and that's just the way it is. And you can either well, like being us on or not Facebook like us, or on Instagram. Don't follow us, whatever, but <laughs> that's the goal. <laughs> Definitely. I said it's more like being on Facebook or Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's great. Well, thanks, yeah. Luke. This is awesome. I'm very, very excited. And I can't wait to see where we take GHL, which is Go High Level, guys, and the course. And so I'm 
two months, right? We said two months because the 15th. Yeah. Two months. Two months he'll be back on here and he's going to talk about the loves, the hates, the goods, the bads, all of things, operations and the nitty gritty. It's all going to be perfect. <laughs> it's all going to be perfect. A hundred percent perfect. I bet. No. Yeah. All right. We'll see. Bye Luke. Bye everybody. See ya. Thanks for Thanks having for me on. In and we will see you next time.